I'm Julie Tucker. I'm the principal at Southside High School. And I'm Kenny Clevenger. I'm the assistant principal at Southside High School. And today we're going to present our mentoring plan for you. We're also going to be talking about new teacher induction and what those processes are like here in Edward County and here at Southside High School. All right, so it's very important um, role to responsibility, first and foremost with the principal, the leader of the school. Um, they have to make sure that they have reviewed school policies and procedures, um, that they know exactly what instructional expectations that they have and that they have expressed those to their teachers. Um, and it's really important to create um, opportunities for new teachers because they learn from those opportunities and from those new experiences. And I think probably the most important to me that's on this list is the encouragement of new teachers. It's really important that they receive encouragement from their administration um, and that they receive that feedback. So that is a really important responsibility there. We also have a mentoring program, and we're very proud of the fact that Etowah County has uh, been instrumental in implementing this mentoring program. But for mentors, there are certain responsibilities within the program. The first is to be a resource for the mentee, and then also to share ideas, to offer advice and recommendations, to maintain that relationship, that good relationship with your mentee, because the new teacher needs somebody that they can depend on outside the office, uh, someone that they might want to be able to confide in, in a way that's not immediately going to their supervisor or to their boss. Um, the mentor should also offer a different perspective and encourage and uplift because we all know that as new teachers, sometimes we feel alone, we feel isolated, it's easy to feel like an island, and so we all need that encouragement and that uplifting that a mentor can provide. So it's not just the principal and the mentors that have responsibilities. There are responsibilities for our new teachers and one of the most important responsibilities they have is to ask questions. If they don't understand, they don't know something, don't assume it, don't be afraid to ask um, and make sure that you get the right answer and, and led in that direction. Um, it's important for new teachers to be willing to go and observe other teachers. That's real collaboration and all new teachers need to practice that. All teachers need to practice it, um, but especially our new teachers. Um, to seek help when they need it and um, very important to make sure that they self-reflect um, and assess and you know, look at lessons, look at practices in the classroom, decide what works, what doesn't work, and decide how they can change and make it better. Another component of the mentoring program as well as the induction program here in Etowah County is the Alabama Educator Code of Ethics Standards. It's really important for new teachers to understand that we as educators are not just governed by uh, what a school's policies or procedures are, but also by state law. And these laws are enacted not only to protect the educator himself or herself, but also to protect students. And so what we've created is um, a set of slides that look at each of the standards of the Alabama Educator Code of Ethics, and we're gonna walk through each of those separately. The first standard is professional conduct. It's important for an educator to understand that they should demonstrate conduct that follows generally recognized professional standards. That means there are certain things that are considered ethical conduct, and there are certain things that are considered unethical conduct. And for sure, we're talking about things like harassment, misuse or mismanagement of testing materials, inappropriate language, on school grounds or any kind of physical altercation. These things are considered unprofessional conduct and things that could result in negative implications for the educator. Standard two, trustworthiness. An educator should exemplify honesty and integrity in the course of professional practice. We all know that trust is an important part of any relationship and the relationship that you're building between the educator and the school system 
the educator and the students, the educator and the other educators that they're working with is integral to the success of the school. So outlining unethical conduct for a new educator is a really important thing that we must do concerning professional qualifications, criminal records, information that you submit, or anything that you might do that uh, is in some way unlawful. You need to know that you will be held accountable for that. Standard three concerns unlawful acts. An educator should abide by federal, state, and local laws and statutes. This concerns any felony or an act that is termed of moral turpitude. So uh, all new educators and educators in general should be aware of the fact that those things could result in loss of your teaching certificate. Standard four, teacher-student relationship. An educator should always maintain a professional relationship with all students, both in and outside the classroom. It's important for us that we make sure that all of our teachers understand what ethical conduct is and what unethical conduct is. And though sometimes these conversations can be uncomfortable, it's important to lay down the facts about what an unethical relationship with a student would look like because we do not want any of our students to be in danger in that way. Standard five concerns alcohol, drug, and tobacco use or possession. An educator should refrain from the use of alcohol and or tobacco during the course of professional practice and should never use illegal or unauthorized drugs uh, at all. So those things are important to relay to your teachers and to explain as well. Standard six focuses on public funds and property. Uh, an, edu an educator entrusted with public funds and property should honor that trust with high level of honesty, accuracy, and responsibility. It is very important um, that as an educator, you are fiscally responsible. And there's a lot of clubs and a lot of times teachers have to you know, use receipt books and everything. And you, know, you talked about trust earlier and it's very important that any time that we are dealing with any kind of funds, any property, that we do that um, ethically. Standard seven is remunerative conduct. An educator should maintain integrity with students, colleagues, parents, patrons, and or business says when accepting gifts, gratuities, favors, or additional compensation. Now, we all know that parents and students, they love to take care of teachers um, and they, they want to show their gratitude, but as um, a professional and as a teacher, you have to know um, what, what the standards, what the law says, and what is considered unethical before accepting any type of gifts. Standard eight um, talks about confidentiality. An educator should comply with state and federal laws and local school board policies relating to confidentiality of students and personnel records, standardized test material, and other information covered by confidentiality agreements. It's so important um, that our teachers understand that uh, these students trust them and that they are privy to information that others are not and they have to keep that information um, confidential and the student's privacy um, confidential as well. Standard nine is abandonment of contract. An educator should fulfill all of the terms and obligations detailed in the contract with the local board of education or educational agency for the duration of the contract. So unethical behavior would be basically walking off the job and not completing the task at hand. Now there are other legal issues that beginning teachers need to understand and uh, be conscious of. FERPA, confidentiality, student-teacher relationships, social media, one of the biggest things in our world today that we have to uh, navigate as professionals, school law and religion, search and seizure, due process, cheating on state assessments. It's important for us that our mentors walk through these items with new teachers to make sure that they understand 
that um, these could be pitfalls that they can avoid simply by their own actions. There's also other challenges. Um, a lot of challenges that new teachers may face um, and teachers in general. But it's important that our teachers know, um, that, that our new teachers understand and know that they have that support of their mentor. Some of these other challenges are things like knowing the school responsibilities, procedures, and policies. School discipline, especially in their classrooms, that can be very challenging at times. Technology use, you know, knowing um, where te when technology is available, how to implement it in your classroom. Uh, safety drills and responsibility, and also knowing um, uh, how to navigate uh, parent communication. Sometimes that can also be a challenge. So now when we're talking about other items that a new teacher might wonder about or be uncertain of when they join a system, specifically our system, there are other big ideas that we also want our mentors to go over with, the, with their mentees. Uh, the first is special education and the way that we run special education programs here in Etowah County. Of course, uh, special education is offered for students of intellectual disabilities and physical disabilities of all kinds, uh, the, all various things that fall under that umbrella, but those special education policies need to be explained to new teachers so that they understand um, how to interact with the special education teachers here at our school and also in all special situations that involve an individualized educational plan. Uh, we do have um, a special education process because we know that as teachers are in their classrooms, they're going to identify students, we want them to identify students that need this extra help and this extra support. And so there is a process though um, that uh, teachers have to go through, the students have to go through, it's a referral process. And so it's very important that the teacher understands that the mentor explains that and goes through exactly what that process is and, um, and so that they can meet the need of that student. In terms of our English language learners, uh, our ELL program here in Etowah County serves 23 languages at this time and we have three ELL teachers who specialize in serving those populations but because we only have those three teachers and we have way more than three schools in our system those teachers have to navigate between all those schools so our ELL teacher is here on our campus one day a week on a designated day to work with our population if there are other times when a student might need that special one-on-one uh, -on -one uh, contact with a teacher, then we can set up times for that to happen and that teacher will come to us. Uh, but it's important for our new teachers to understand how an ELL would fit into the program and how those processes need to work in the regular ed classroom as well. It's also important um, that our new teachers know about the programs that are available through our career tech. And there are very many um, programs, automotive technology, electronics, health science. And this is something that as students come through their classroom and they see them, and especially here at our school, we're in a high school, nine through 12, and we want to make sure that our students are placed and in these programs where they're supposed to be. Um, to benefit from them. So if our new teachers know about these programs as the students come through their classrooms, they can help make sure that they are, you know, in the programs where they need to be. We also have a pre-K program here in Etowah County, and this is important for our new teachers to know. Even though we are a, a, a high school, nine through 12, we also have new teachers who might have young children who might want to put them into a pre-K program, and we're proud of the fact that Etowah County has now nine pre-K programs in our system. So uh, the fact that a pre-K program is part of our system only increases the strength of our instruction in elementary schools, middle schools, and on up into the high schools, because the earlier we can get to a kid, the quicker we can make sure that we are being a difference in a positive way in that student's life. 
And technology. Technology is so important um, for our new teachers to understand. In every school, the technology availability will be a little different. In Etowah County, um, we are very proud though that we have robotics implemented in high school and middle school and ele some elementary schools at this time. There's coding that's going on, a lot of uh, STEM programs going on, uh, hoping to implement some computer science. So it's very important that our teachers know, our new teachers know and understand these technology programs that are available for our students too. In terms of what the actual mentoring program is going to look like here at Southside High School, uh, first of all, we have uh, a system set up that is going to integrate new teachers into not only the classroom but also into the culture and norms of our school uh, and our district and our community. Questions like, well, how is that done here? How is this done here? Need to be answered and they're answered through this program. We provide training for our new teachers in classroom fundamentals and best practices and we also provide leadership and foster a culture of continuous professional growth because we want our teachers to be successful and we want our students to be successful too. Absolutely and as a principal it's very important when choosing that mentor um, for that new teacher and these are some characteristics that um, we look for in teachers and before we place them with a new teacher. And we want to make sure that they are comfortable um, being observed. We want to make sure that a mentor is just someone that is really willing to help. So what would a mentoring system look like in Etowah County or at Southside High School in a whole year? Well, this graphic kind of explains that for you. It's broken down month by month to show the various things that need to be done. A lot of times in a lot of systems, and even before we had our mentoring program here, when a new teacher would come into the system, they'd be given a gigantic folder or three ring binder with all of this information in it. Mm -hmm. And it's very overwhelming. So the mentor is tasked with spreading those ideas out throughout the year and being that first person that the mentee can come to to ask questions about just to walk you through a little bit of it. In August, a school tour is probably uh, a good idea because you know you're gonna have kids who come up to that new teacher and say, hey, where's Mr. Clevenger's office? And if they don't know where my office is or where the main office is, then uh, they'll be caught unaware. So a school tour, how to do attendance, that's something to do in August. Then in September, what happens when progress reports need to go out? What do I need to make sure I have on those progress reports? How am I doing assessments? How do I set up my PLP? Those things are important to talk about then. In October, maybe it's time to start thinking about, hey, I've got something wrong with the air in my classroom. How do I create a maintenance report? Or uh, what needs to be on a report card when report cards come out? That kind of stuff. Uh, in November, December, we really stress getting into other people's classrooms, watching other people teach, and being comfortable, as Ms. Tucker said, with an administrator coming in and observing you. Then in January and February, it's time to reflect what has been your best practice, what do you want to change to make the rest of this year even better? In March, how do I handle bookkeeping items like uh, creating purchase orders or contacting parents? Uh, in April, what do I need to prepare for with state assessments and how do I help in that situation? Uh, and then in May, of course, an end of year checklist, more reflection. It's important that our teachers understand that the only way that they can grow is by admitting where they didn't get where they wanted to go so they can push forward and get there eventually. Uh, this is a reference slide that explains where our Alabama Co Educator Code of Ethics ideas came from. Uh, we are really thankful that you've been with us today walking through this program and we appreciate your time.